former minister remanded in prison in connection with Mambila Power Project. Nigerian Customs records 10 billion Naira contraband seizure in 2023. Naira continues to fall against the dollar as volatility continues. On the international scene, Ecuadorian president orders capture of criminal gangs involved in TV station attack. Oh, hello there and welcome to the news update on Trust TV. I'm Sagir Ibrahim. Thanks for joining us. You're watching the news update. A federal high court in Abuja on Wednesday ordered the remand of a former Minister of Power and Steel, Olu Agunloye, in the Kuje Correctional Service. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission arraigned Agunloye over allegations of fraud in the Mambila Power Project. Agunloye was brought before the federal high court in Abuja on Wednesday, where he pleaded not guilty to the charges read against him. The judge, however, ordered that the embattled former minister be remanded in prison pending when bail would be granted. Also, the Supreme Court has reserved judgment in the appeals by the People's Democratic Party and the All Progressives Congress against the election of Alex Oti as governor of Abia State. A five-member panel led by John Okoro adjourned proceedings after taking arguments from parties involved in the matter, the Court of Appeals sitting in Lagos had dismissed the petition by the People's Democratic Party and its candidate, Oke Ahiwe and Ikechi Emenike of the APC. The APC and PDP are asking the Apex Court to nullify the election of Oti of the Labour Party as Abia State Governor. Also, the 2023 governorship candidate of the Social Democratic Party, SDP in Adamawa State, Umar Ardo, has withdrawn his appeal against Governor Ahmadou Fintiri's re-election at the Supreme Court. The Court of Appeal in Abuja had in November dismissed a petition filed by Ardo challenging Fintiri's victory in the 2023 polls. In his ruling, Justice Ugochuku Ogaku affirmed a previous decision of the tribunal led by Justice Theodora Uloho, which had dismissed Ardo's petition for being incompetent and not properly filed. The appellate court held that the appellants did not prove the allegations of corruption and also non-compliance to the Electoral Act against the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Justice Ogaku said there was no basis to grant the appeal. The SDP candidate and his party had filed a petition at the State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal after Fintiri was declared the winner of the poll. Ardo had sought the nullification of Fintiri's re-election on the grounds that there was substantial non-compliance with the Electoral Act, corrupt practices, threats and violence during the exercise. And in security, the police on Tuesday said they have arrested three suspected members of a gun-running syndicate in connection with the December 24 attack on some communities in Plateau. The force public relations officer, ACP Olumui Wadejobi, said this during a media briefing in Abuja. He said the suspects of the suspects, the arrest of the suspects followed an order by the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Betoku, to emplace tactical strategies to bring to book the perpetrators of the attack. Adejobi said one ash-colored golf car, one AK-47 rifle, one AK-49 rifle, 1,000 rounds of live ammunition and five magazines were recovered from the suspects. The police spokesperson said efforts were being made to apprehend others involved in the attacks, adding that the public will be updated as events unfold. Still in security, the Kogi State Commissioner of Police, Betran Onoha, has confirmed the arrest of six suspects in connection with the attack of the senator representing Kogi East Central District, Jibrin Isa Echucho. The State Police Command's po Police Public Relations Officer, S.D. William Ayer, disclosed this in a statement in Lokoja on Wednesday. A statement noted that CP Onoha condemned the attack on the said senator, stressing that no stone will be left unturned in their bid to arrest and prosecute the culprits. The police boss further assured that the suspects will be charged to court immediately to serve as deterrent to others. The CP, however, appealed to the people of the state to remain law-abiding and continue to collaborate 
with the command and other security agencies in the area of sharing timely and credible information on the activities of criminal elements living in the environment. Also, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has seized the passport of the suspended Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Beta Edu, and her predecessor, Sadia Umar Farouk, over the ongoing investigations and the scandals in the ministry. As the EFCC interrogated the suspended minister over the 44 billion naira fraud uncovered in the ministry, it was learned that managing directors of three commercial banks were also questioned on Tuesday over the fraud. The scandal involving Edu burst open after a leaked memo revealed that the suspended minister directed the Accountant General of the Federation, Oluatoni Madein, to transfer 585 million naira to a private account owned by one Onielu Bridget, who the ministry claimed currently serves as the project accountant grants for vulnerable groups. The minister had claimed that the 585 million naira payment was meant for vulnerable groups in Akwaibong, Cross River, Ogo, and Lagos State, describing the allegations against her as baseless. In deference to public pressure, the president on Monday suspended Edu and directed her to hand over to the permanent secretary in the ministry. Also, the Borno state governor, Babagana Zulum, has assured that his government is committed to end the lingering farmer herders clashes in the state. The governor stated this after overseeing a truce between farming communities and herders in Gamburungala town. Governor Zulum appreciated the communities for embracing peace and encouraged them to shun violence. He reiterated that his government will prevent future clashes between herders and farmers. Zulum said a committee had been set up to address the farmer herders conflict. The members of this community, this committee will include the DSS, the police, uh, the uh, representatives of all the emirate councils in Borno State, uh, the Mietal Association, Al Hayat Association and then uh, the government representatives so that they will look into uh, the issues of Hamas Kadath clash in all the 27 local government areas. The terms of references, reference will be drawn. Especially, they will also re-establish the Den cattle routes. And they will also identify grazing reserves so that we shall completely address the root causes of the Hamas Hadas clash. In the Nigerian Customs Service, Federal Operations Unit Zone A, Keja says it made 1,119 seizures of contrabands worth 10 billion naira in 2023. The Customs Area Controller, Hussein Ejibunu, disclosed this on Wednesday while addressing journalists at the command. He said about 83,170 bags of foreign rice equivalent to 139 trailers were seized within the period under review. Ejibundu listed the seized items to include bags of foreign rice, vehicles, marijuana, tramadol, used tires, poultry products, footwear, as well as petroleum products, among others. He said the most prominent of the seizures is foreign parboiled rice, which amounted to 139 trailer loads amounting to around 83,000 bags of 50 kg rice. Elsewhere, the Bayelsa state governor, Duye Diri, has called on the federal government to strengthen the Nigerian Navy for enhanced professionalism in the discharge of their mandate. The governor stated this when the chief of naval staff, Vice Admiral Emmanuel Ogala, paid him a visit on Monday in the government house, Yanagua. Trust TV's Friday, Ebimo Boe Peter has more on the details. Represented by his deputy, Lawrence Rijakbo, Governor Doyuduri said it is important for the federal government to review the ideals of using non-state actors to protect national assets in the state maritime domain. While he expressed worry over the security threat it would cause the state and the country at large, he stressed the need for the Nigerian Navy to be properly equipped saying the Navy is better professionally to provide security for the country's national asset without any form of sabotage that will lead to environmental pollution. We believe that what we are doing currently, we are inadvertently releasing militias who are not coordinated and supervised. We have had incidents of these people in the name of 
protecting oil contracts, we raid our communities and molest people and molest our wives and children and even sack some communities in the name of they are going there to look for. If the Navy is strengthened, you have the capacity to do that. And I believe and I want to insist that the Navy must be allowed to place that role and exclusively that role. I do not believe that we should begin to raise up militias. You will be surprised that we we'll get to the point this people will non-state actors will not try to challenge us. Earlier, the chief of naval staff, Vice Admiral Emmanuel Bugala, said Bios State play a cardinal role in the Navy's quest to achieve its mandate of protecting national assets in the country due to the number of multinational companies operating in the maritime domain of the Niger Delta region. When he took over from office, one of the primary tasks that he gave to us is to ensure that we provide the enabling environment to enable the oil companies to be able to do their job in such a way that we increase oil production with the overall objective of increasing revenue for the development of this country. Vice Admiral Ogalaf, while appreciating the state government for providing an enabling environment for the Navy to operate, called for support from host communities in the area, information sharing to enable the Navy fight against economic sabotage. To acknowledge the unflinching support of the governor and the government of Baeta State and the communities and the people of Baeta State as a whole. They have given us the enabling environment, they have provided the resources, even committed the state to surface. And we want to seek the support of the people also to continue to cooperate with us, particularly in the area of providing intelligence, in the area of providing information that will enable us to turn the tide against those criminals who are not, who are hell bent on distorting the nation's economy. The Bayasa state government also plugged the state's continuous support to the Nigerian Navy to ensure it performs effectively in the state. From Yanagua, Friday, Ibumabowe Peter, Trust TV News, Yanagua. This is the news update on Trust TV, coming up shortly. Reactions continue to trail over Better Edu Saga. This and of course more news after the break. Don't go anywhere. Many thanks for staying with us on the news update. Now let's take a look at the headlines again. Former minister remanded in prison in connection with Mambila Power Project. A Nigerian customs record 10 billion naira contraband seizure in 2023. Moving on to other stories now. A woman suspected to be a ritualist has reportedly stolen a day old baby at the post antenatal ward of the Dalhatu Arafat Specialist Hospital Dash, Lafia, the Nasrul State Capital. The incident, which happened at 6 o'clock in the morning, threw the entire staff of the hospital into confusion. Investigation by Trust TV shows that Wasira Suleiman, the 20-year-old mother who was brought to Dash at about 2 a.m., was delivered of a baby boy at about 3 a.m. on Tuesday, January 9, 2024, through a cesarean section. A source in the hospital who preferred anonymity said the mother, alongside her baby, was brought to the post-antenatal ward for further medical attention. The source added that a relative who was earlier entrusted to take care of the baby and his mother allegedly introduced another caregiver to take care of the baby, who in the process took the baby away and never came back. Uh, the baby was uh, delivered uh, via emergency cesarean section on account of uh, two previous cesarean sections in Lebo, around 3, three a.m. That was yesterday. And immediately after the surgery, the baby was handed over to the caregiver. The woman was transferred back to the postnatal ward. And the caregiver wanted to go home and pick something. And she decided to pick a total stranger and introduce her to the patient that she would take care of her and her baby depending when she comes back. And the, the, the so-called stranger then took the baby away yeah, with the uh, pretense that she wants to go and bath the baby. And she never came back. Also, reactions have continued to trail President Tudibu's decision to suspend the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Better Edu, over alleged transfer of 585 million naira to private accounts. The Makuji residents have been commending the President 
for his decision, even as they urge the EFCC to follow due process in the investigation. Trust TV's Jimmy Azande reports. Suspension of Beta Ibu uh, was uh, long overdue uh, because uh, if there is any allegation on you, especially that kind of amount of money that was alleged to have been transferred by her to a private account, uh, there is a need for her to be suspended so that proper investigation can be carried out. The president should not cover anybody. Whoever that is mentioned to have, uh, to have carried any money or diverted any money that belongs to the public should be suspended for a proper investigation to be, uh, to be carried out. According to the residents, for any leadership to be worth its sort, it must follow due process, embrace the rule of law, and also give a listening ear to public outcry. This, they said, President Tinubu has done in a better edu saga. Africa, politics of underdevelopment is the order of the day. It is key. Everybody is concerned about getting involved in corrupt practices. And so until our people realize that this kind of politics that we play here in Africa is not getting us anywhere. And when we shun politics of underdevelopment, it will mean a step in the right direction. And so many people will play the kind of politics that will bring about development. About two or three of them are sacked like that of this, what are, this impunity that we been practicing. I don't think we'll be discussing about corruption much in this country. Others have the opinion that if the suspended minister is found guilty, it will be a setback for the youth population which she represented as the youngest minister appointed in the Tinubu cabinet. I don't like the idea of giving something to a young person and the person misbehaving. Basically, these old men think we young people cannot hold any office. And that character shows that young people cannot hold any office. Uh, my advice to people who are holding public office is that they should learn from this woman's mistake. They should know that you cannot do and get away with it as it is before. You know, if the president himself is against this, I, I think there will, there will be no corruption in this country the, by the step he has, he has made so far. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has begun investigation into the financial dealings of the ministry as ordered by the president. Jimmy Azandi, Trust TV News, Makodi. And in business, the Naira fell to 1,089.51 Naira to a dollar on the official investor and exporter window on Tuesday. The currency fell by 27.19% from the 856 Naira 57 Cowboy dollar it closed on Monday. According to data from the FMDQ Securities Exchange on Tuesday, the Naira opened trading at 922 Naira 22 Cowboy to a dollar, rose to a high of 1,000. 251 naira to a dollar and low of 720 naira to a dollar before closing at 1089.51 naira to the dollar. Total forex turnover on the day was 97.45 million dollars. This is the fourth time the naira will close below the 1000 naira mark on the official window. Tuesday's 1089 naira 51 cover to the dollar is the second lowest the naira has closed on the official FX window since the Central Bank of Nigeria removed the rate cap on the currency. And the Nigerian was on Monday sentenced to 10 years in prison in an, an order to pay over $1.46 million in restitution for conspiring to launder money derived from internet fraud scams. The U.S. Department of Justice in its communique said Court documents and evidence presented at trial revealed that Olugbe Ngalawal, 33, of Indianapolis, Indiana, worked directly with the Nigerian-based leader of an international criminal organization that defrauded individuals and businesses across the United States out of millions of dollars. According to the papers, they were able to carry out the frauds through sophisticated internet-based fraud schemes, including romance fraud and business email compromise schemes. The paper said the criminal organization frequently targeted elderly victims who believed they had fallen in love with people they had met on the internet. 
Lowell then laundered millions of dollars of proceeds from the fraud schemes. Accounts Lowell controlled received over $3.6 million in deposits between January 2019 and May 2020, according to the communique. Three co-conspirators, Michael Herman, Rita Hassan, and Dwight Baines, previously pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit money laundering. On the international scene, Ecuador's president has ordered that criminal gangs be neutralized after days of violence culminated in an attack on a television studio. Mass gunmen broke into public television channel TC's live studio during a broadcast forcing staffs to flee the floor. Police made 13 arrests following the attack, which injured two employees. At least 10 people have been killed since a 60-day state of emergency began in Ecuador Monday. The emergency was declared after a notorious gangster vanished from his prison cell. It is unclear whether the incident at the TV studio in Guayaquil was related to the disappearance from a prison in the same city of the boss of the Cheneros gang, Adolfo Macias Vilama Orto, as he is better known. And that wraps up the news update at this hour. Do well to follow us across all of our social platforms and also catch our live stream on YouTube for more news, programs and documentaries. I'm Sagir Ibrahim. Thanks for watching.